Okay, welcome back. Last time we continued to make some decent progress through over Raccoon City Police Department. We met Chief Irons, got the club's key, after we had to do a little bit of the game playing as Sherry. And I ended off of yesterday's episode knowing that I had to go back for three things. So I'm quickly just going to run and go get those. I think I said I would go and get them in between episodes. But, well, I guess I'm just going to go and... I guess I'm just going to run and go get them now. They shouldn't take too long. It should only be a couple of minutes of detour. But uh, hopefully I won't run into any trouble on my way there. Because, uh, honestly, I think last episode didn't go exactly as I would have liked. But anything could happen, you know? So now we go out here. We go back down these stairs. Go back down these stairs. And then we go out through the heart key door. And from there, we should be good to go. And by should be good to go, I mean... Actually, while I'm here, maybe I should open my last cl Is it the last club door? It might be, but either way, I'll be, uh... I'll be making, like, two or three trips regardless, so I don't think it makes that much of a difference, all things considered. Realistically, I might be in a better... Also, it might be a better move for me to actually just, uh... To act the words, it might have actually been a better play for me if I'd instead of doing it this way, if I'd just saved in the whatchamacallit, just uh, in the main hall. Fortunately, I killed the two lickers that had appeared here in the previous episodes, so I don't need to be too worried about this right now. Honestly, I, I was content to leave the green herb that's in here just until later, but I don't actually know if I need to come back through here at a later time. So, uh, I'm just gonna pick it up now for my own safety. Once again, there's a typo. Dale 911. The handbrake is loose, but I can't move it alone. Okay, and, uh, I don't think we're gonna be meeting Leon to help, help out with that. And I don't think Sherry's gonna be able to help us with that either. So, uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be doing this. So, uh, in... But in that case... If that's the case, then this entire room is kind of pointless in Claire's campaign. Anyway, we'll be okay. Oh, also, uh, in the previous episode, we finally found we found some more ammo, which honestly I was very happy about. And um, we also found an SMG, but there was also a side pack there that would have let us carry a couple more items. But I left, the, I took the SMG and left the side pack for Leon. I don't know if that will be... I don't know if that will uh, turn out to have been a good or a bad decision, but, well, it's a decision that I've now made. Okay. Also, this room is still, like, suspiciously quiet. Anyway, so we'll just grab these ink ribbons, and there was also some acid rounds here. That zombie still isn't getting up. If, if picking up these acid rounds is what makes it get up, I'm gonna be annoyed. Okay, fantastic. It didn't get up at all. So now I can leave that room, because I don't think I ever need to go back in there. In the remake, that's a safe room, which honestly would have been kind of handy, to be totally honest. Although, uh, its placement in the remake makes it a lot more... It makes it... Its placement in the remake makes it make a little bit more sense as to why it's a safe room. However, um, if I'm going to be on my way back... Back. I might as well just check through here, because I know I have one more club key door, and I might as well just, uh, rather than backtrack, go all the way back and everything, I might as well just just uh, see what's beyond that door now, and if it's a puzzle that I need a certain item for, I can run back and get it, rather than having to, like, run back, go over there, see I need an item and run back again. So, uh, you know, just for, just for convenience purposes, we can see what's in here. And hopefully it won't be a, a major problem. Also, 10 out of 10, there should, uh, that liquor should still be trapped in the interrogation room. So, uh, that's good. I don't need to worry about that. Okay, this key is useless now, so let's quickly head on in here and see what this room has in store for us. Because I think it's the last room we have access to. It has a liquor in it immediately. That's kind of scary. So, let's just wait it out. I, I missed. One, two, uh, three. No, four. I took four shots that time. 
But apparently Claire just tanked those. Apparently Claire Redfield can just tank those hits because we didn't even leave fine status. Pop off, Claire. Pop off. Oh, this looks like the gear we need. A picture of a man on a carriage. Something is on the wheel. Light the queen, the king, and the jack. Then the, char then the carriage will start running. Okay, so... Let's have a quick look at this. Uh... No, number 13 has been hatched. The number 12 has been hatched, assumably. So this will be for number 11. You can light a fire here. So, uh, so that immediately tells me I need to run back and grab the lighter. Oh, what's this? A first aid spray. Okay. 10 out of 10? Uh, another common W for just kind of, you know, running against all of the walls to find things. Because I would have never found that otherwise. Okay, uh, what actually would be my fastest path back now? I think I should just go this way, and yeah, I'll just go through the main lobby. If I just go through the main hall, I should be okay. Because I know for a fact that no enemies in this game can ever come into the main hall. Like, that is one thing I knew about this game even before I started. Mostly because I remember seeing people in the remake being, uh, a bit alarmed when Mr. X could come into the main hall. Actually, that reminds me, we haven't seen Mr. X at all. Usually at this point in the remake, he's turned up. Does Claire just not deal with him at all in this version of the, in the original game? Also, that is entirely rhetorical. Either way, let's quickly just run through here and drop off some items and pick up the lighter, because I think I understand what this puzzle wants from me. Either that, or I'm just gonna blindly guess until I get it right. So, let's put the green herb away. Uh, okay, this is starting to look a bit messy, but honestly, I'm not too bothered about it now. Wait, I organized it once. That's good enough for me. Uh, where are my acid rounds? There we go. So, we have 12 acid rounds. Uh, and we can just throw that down there as well. So now, let's quickly grab the light X, because I assume I need that. And I'm going to keep a hold of my uh, two weapons, mostly just because in case anything happens. But at the same time, realistically, if I'm if I'm going to be trying to prepare for a fight, uh, realistically, I think... If I'm going to be in store for a fight, I think I'd probably be in a much better position to bring the grenade launcher. But I don't think the game would just drop... Actually... What am I talking about? Yes, the game would just drop a boss on me. However, at the same time, I don't think I need to worry about that currently. Because it seems like I just need to go into a puzzle room. And considering that this is the final door, like considering this is the last room that I had to go into, I think I know what my reward for this will be. Well, obviously it'll be that gear. And then I assume the gear will tie back to the clock tower. And I assume with solving the puzzle in the clock tower will give me the other half of that blue stone. And from there, I should be able to put the two parts of the blue stone together. And then that should be able to solve the puzzle in Chief Irons' office. I think. Okay, let's just see what this says again. A picture of a man on a carriage. Something is on the wheel. Like the queen, the king, and the jack. Okay, so it's queen, king, jack. That seems simple enough to me if I'm understanding it correctly. So let's light this up. Okay, so it said Queen, King, Jack. So we should do 12, 13, then 11. I'm working on the logic of cards here because obviously you, you do one through 10, then Jack, Queen, yeah, then Jack, Queen, King. So the Jack would be 11, Queen would be 12, King would be 13. And then I guess the ace is one. Okay. So, uh, now we grab this gear. Well, the golden cog wheel. And we should be able to now head on back up to the clock tower area. How did I even get up there, actually? Uh... I think it was through the library. I think it was through the library up the stairs. And if not, then, uh... If not, I'm going to be wandering around for a while just trying to figure out what to do. Because, uh, 
But I think that's what it is. And honestly, since I've killed every enemy... Well, okay, almost every enemy. I left the Lick Envy investigation room, I left the crows, and I left, like, six zombies in the morgue. But uh, I don't think I need to go back into the morgue for anything. So uh, I don't really want to go back in there if I can avoid it. Because it was like six enemies in a very cramped space. And uh, yeah, not exactly my ideal place to be fighting things, you know? Okay, so now up we go through here. Now. Oh, jeez. That was awful. <laughs> Oh! It, it went for its lick attack. Okay, that... That was pretty bad. I should have... I don't know why I didn't expect a licker to be there. Honestly, because, you know, the last time I came through here, there was nothing here. But now that I actually think about it, it makes perfect sense why there would be one there. But there was one on that kind of... On that kind of balcony leading in into the clock tower initially. Oh no. Okay. That's a few zombies. However, that looked to be on the west side corridor and I don't think I ever need to come back through there again. So, uh... I'm, I'm gonna quickly just uh, file that away under that is Leon's problem now. Because, in theory, that should be Leon's problem now. Okay, now I should come through here. There was a liquor here initially, but it's dead. So I don't need to worry about that, and this should be the clock tower. And hopefully there aren't any enemies in here. However, Actually, wait, they broke in on the west side there. So if I'd used the cord there, would they have broken in on the east side? Okay. No, wait, it was... It was up the stairs, it was up the stairs. That's where I needed to be. And I should probably heal before I uh, encounter any more enemies, but I don't have any healing items currently on me. But now we can just put this cog in. In the anvis should. We press the switch, and that should... Do a thing. Man, that was so much stuff for half a stone. But with that, we should now be pretty safe. And by safe, I mean, uh, the power source for the clock, the gears are clean. Okay. But yeah, with that, we can now head on back to Chief Irons' office. And in theory, get on out of this, uh, at least this part of the uh, police department. If it's anything like the remake, I might end up coming back through here at a much later time to pick up a couple of items before the end game. But I don't know. Also, it would have been an absolutely dastardly move if the devs had just gone like, actually, since you've solved that puzzle, enemies are here now. Honestly, I say that. I shouldn't, uh,. I probably shouldn't tempt the game. I know the game is like 25 years old, all of this point, so uh, I don't think it's going to magically change the game's coding to make some enemies appear, but honestly, but honestly, I kind of have no real idea of what I'm doing. And uh, also, I should probably have actually mentioned, uh, like, that, like, enemies can't appear in the main, main hall. Oh, but they can appear on these, like, uh, slightly raised areas, I guess. But this, at the end of this little uh, bit, I should get back to the safe room, because this is the waiting room. Yeah, because this is the waiting room, where... Man, what do you even get from the safe in here in the remake? I want to say it's the thing that makes Leon's pistol a free-round burst. Okay. So, let's grab some healing items. Okay, we can put the light there away. I probably don't need that anymore, to be honest. Uh, I'll grab the blue stone, I'll grab the eagle stone, and I will grab the serpent stone. I'm also going to temporarily put the bow gun away, 
and that may be a bad choice, but, well, it's the choice I'm currently making. Wait. I think I add another green herb to this, that becomes a full heal. So, uh, it may be a questionable choice, but I'm gonna do that. To be totally honest, uh, if you if you did if you watched the for sorry if you watched the playthrough of RE One, you may recall that didn't really go too well. But hey, because uh, basically by the time I got to the end of the game, I like thoroughly was like I was doing okay for ammo, I think for the most part, and then right at the end, I think I like ran out of ammo and healing items. Also, I don't know if I actually run a little bit faster if I don't have an item on me, but I think I do. I might be completely wrong on that, but you definitely seem like you run a tiny bit faster. But okay. Claire! Sherry, you're okay. I'm glad to see you're safe, Claire. Well, that was a short interaction, but okay. Okay, so... Now... The sacrifice dies by the claw of the jaguar. Its blood forms a serpent that poisons the earth. An eagle glistens bathed in blood, and the gateway of doom will open. Okay, so... If we go jaguar stone... Oh, they just automatically go in the right places. Fantastic. So there goes the eagle one, and now the serpent stone. And that opens... this! Okay, let's see what this little note says. Uh, mail to the Chief. To Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. We have lost the Mansion Lab facility due to the actions of the renegade opera of Albert Wesker. Fortunately, his interference will have no lasting effects upon our, conti upon our continued virus research. Our only present concern... Uh, sorry, our only present concern is the presence of the remaining STARS members. Redfield, Valentine, Burton, Chambers, and Vickers. So, Chris, Jill, Barry, Rebecca, and Brad. Uh, if it comes to light, if it comes to light that the stars ha as have any evidence as to our, as to the activities of our research, dispose of them in such a way that would appear purely accidental. Continue to monitor their progress and make certain their knowledge does not go public. Annette will continue to be your contact throughout this affair. William Birkin. To Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. I've deposited the amount of 10,000 US dollars to the account and for your services put this to um, as per our agreement. The development of the G virus uh, uh, sorry, the development of the G virus scheduled to replace the T virus is near completion. Once completed, I'm certain that I will be appointed to, to be a member of the executive board for Umbrella Incorporated. It's imperative that we so it is imperative that we proceed with extreme caution. Redfield and the remaining STARS members are still attempting to uncover information on the project. Continue to monitor their activities and block all attempts to investigate the underground research facilities. William Birkin. To Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. We have a problem. I've received information informing me that Umbrella HQ has sent spies to recover my research on the G-Virus. Uh, there, there are an unknown number of agents involved. They must not be allowed to take this project away from me, as it represent, as it represents my entire life's work. Search the city thoroughly for any suspicious persons, detain in any such individuals by whatever means are deemed necessary, and contact me immediately through a net. Uh, with these precautions, any possible threat should be eliminated. I will not allow anyone to steal my work on the G virus, not even Umbrella, William Birkin. So. This is the first notes we actually properly get about William Birkin, and we'll be uh, meeting the man himself in probably the near future. Claire, I'm going down there. Stay here and wait for me, okay? Also, one thing that I will say that is really nice in the remake is the is Chief Irons' office also acts as a safe room. So, uh, you get both a save point and an item box location there, which is kind of nice. And do we get into that cutscene immediately here, or what? What do we get here? No? Okay, we can just walk through.
Well, that was gross, but hey, we'll be uh, seeing more of that later. And let's go and see what... Oh, well, that, well, that room isn't suspicious at all. This dungeon-looking room. Yeah, totally not suspicious. Okay, let's see what's in here. I probably should be ready for a fight just in case. <laughs> so you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up! You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! If you must know, it's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bioweapons. Superior to the T-Virus in every way. Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen his little girl running around here somewhere. Sherry, isn't it? In case you haven't already figured it out, the monster that's been tearing my precinct apart is yet another product of the G-Virus. An ultimate bio-weapon. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. Oh, I just can't take the pain. Now, now this is gonna. This may reflect badly on me as a person. Personally, I think he deserved worse. Like, I think he deserved way worse than that. You know, because he's kind of just, like, objectively awful. Uh, formal and chloroform and other chemicals. Yeah, I don't like the... I don't like the idea of what was probably going on in this room. And by that, I mean... This may or may not have been a room where I think uh, he may have been taxidermying people or something, perhaps. Disturbing stuff. It doesn't even specify, it's just disturbing stuff. However, considering that thing burst out of him, considering that thing burst out of him and then just kind of went away, I am a little bit suspicious of it, so I'm going to run back and kind of... I guess grab some uh, heavier firepower, I suppose. Fortunately, there shouldn't be any enemies in here, because uh, it's just a straight shot to uh, Chief Irons' office. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, personally, I think considering all the things Chief Irons did before, well, before the events of the game and during, personally, I think he should, I think he deserved way worse. But, you know, that's, uh, that's not my decision to make. I mean, to be fair, that looks a lot more visceral than in the remake, I think. Okay, I was gonna say, is Sherry not here? Okay. Good to know that Sherry's actually just gonna, like, actually kind of stay put over there, you know? Mostly because I think that's probably safest for her. Also, I don't know if I'm gonna get thrown into a fight. That's, that was the wrong door. That was the that was the way of a trophy room, not the uh, not the corridor back towards a safe room. So let's just keep going here. Do I have to go all the way around the table? Really? That's a little inconvenient, but you know what? It's only like five seconds, so I probably shouldn't complain. Now, I love that enemies haven't appeared here again. To be honest, I said that, and then was fully prepared to just, like, round the corner and suddenly be like, Hey, here's five zombies. Like, I would have been 
Okay, I say I would have been prepared for that. I would have expected that, but not prepared for it. Definitely not. You know what? While I'm here, I might as well just take the grenade launcher with the acid rounds. And I'll bring one first aid spray. Will that be enough? Hopefully. Because uh, if not, I may end up dying and redoing the entire episode up to this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there, see what's going on, and I guess try to make it to the next safe room. And then I guess I'll end off today's episode there. But we'll see how it goes. I, Because honestly, I kind of had a general idea of what I'd be doing up to this point. But from here on out, I am basically completely in the dark on RE2 original. Like... By the time Ions dies, by the time Ions dies in the remake, you're like pretty close to going into the sewers. And that's like three fifths of the way through the game or something. Because you do like the first bit in RPD, then you have the. then you like do one bit, then you have to go back through and meet Mr. X, then you have Sherry's section, which is. Honestly, I think in the remake, Sherry's section is the most uncomfortable and unsettling part of the entire game. I would say it's genuinely the scariest part of the entire game. Mostly because... Mostly because you're playing as, like, a helpless child. Okay, so he is super dead. Good. Okay, let's climb down this ladder. The real question is, am I safe down here? If no, I'm going to be climbing back up this ladder as fast as I can. Okay, this is suspicious. I am going to just uh, equip the grenade launcher. It just equips all of them at once. That's kind of good to know. Okay. Something's going to happen at least. Oh, I don't like that. I really don't like that. Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna shoot acid rounds at it and hope it dies. Also, I don't... Oh, can I just step on these? Is that how I kill those? Oh, no, I missed one. Oh, no, I missed two. Okay, yeah, I do think I just step on these. Oh, it's down. I think. No? No, I guess I was trying to, like, run through it. Okay, now it's down. Man, I, I used ten acid runes for that. I really should have been a bit more conservative with my ammo, but hey, it's dead. How do I, how do I get, there we go, I was going to say, how do I get that, this thing off me? <laughs> okay. Not exactly ideal, but I'll take it. That's kind of a win. I don't like how it's kind of just festering like that. Yeah, let's just move on. Let's just pull the handgun out and, uh... Keep going. See what's further on. Will I push the button? Don't see why not. Oh, it brings the ladder down. That's nice. So, where will this ladder take me? That's the real question. Probably towards sewers would be my guess, because this looks like a start of a sewer section. Okay. Okay, let's drop down, I guess. What's through here? Anything? I oh, I have to go back for Sherry. That actually makes a lot more sense. I kind of feel a bit stupid for doing that now. Okay, yeah, I honestly, that was kind of a... That was... What's the word? That was kind of... It wasn't really a blunder, I didn't, like, lose anything for it. As long as this thing doesn't respawn, which there would be no reason for it to. Okay, yeah, I think we are now okay. Also, like, that is just straight up a cave system underneath Raccoon City. 
But okay, so... Irons is super dead. That monster is dead. And... Was... Was that a boss? It took 10 acid rounds, so I assume it was a boss. Okay, I say it took 10 acid rounds. I think I missed, like, four of them. So I think it died in, like, five or six, but, uh... But definitely wasn't exactly a showcase of my ability to aim. That's for certain. Like, uh... <laughs> Oh, it was not a good day to be my ability to aim, apparently. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'll go and collect Cherry, and then I'll just save the game and end off today's episode here. And then start off the sewers next time. I'm... Claire, you came back! I can't believe the man who developed the G-Virus is actually her father. What's wrong, Claire? It's nothing, but I think I found a way out of here. We should be able to find some place safe if we can just make it out of town. But... Don't worry, I'll protect you. I promise. But you have to make sure you don't leave my side. Leon, are you still there? We're leaving. Are you crazy? The streets are still crawling with zombies. It'll be all right, trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! Yeah, that seems like an oversight on Claire's part. Just like, hey, say like... Just be like, hey, Leon, we're in Chief Ians's office. Yeah, just get over here. I feel like that would be a much safer option. Also, I don't know, like, I assume I can just wander freely. Like, I don't imagine it'll block me off. Oh, Sherry just waits in the office. That makes perfect sense. Okay, so let's run and go save the game. And also, while I'm here, I suppose I should just drop off. Honestly, I think I'll just drop the grenade launcher off again. Because, honestly, that was a boss fight. So, uh... If I don't need it, I will just, you know, keep a bit safe on it. I'll keep the first aid spray, though. Also, I'll just pick these up real quick for convenience purposes, just to, uh, kind of reload that a little faster. Because, who knows? I might need the grenade launcher at some point in the near future. I mean, I hopefully won't, but anything could happen. I will, I will take the bow gun with me again, though, because I think I got some decent use out of it and so far. Now, let's just uh, grab some ink ribbons, and away we go. That should be episode five complete. So let's save our game and uh, celebrate another, another job well done, because I've managed to not die yet. Honestly, I'm very pleased with how this is going so far. But anyway, next time, what I'm going to end off today's episode here, and next time we'll be entering the sewers. Next time we'll be entering the sewers, and uh, yeah, we'll be seeing what lies below Raccoon City. So uh, yeah, I'm going to end off today's episode here. As always, feel free to leave a comment or, or a subscribe or click any of the buttons down below if you feel so inclined. And I will hopefully see you all next time for more Resident Evil 2. Okay, thanks for watching. Later.